Now, as you may have noticed, I haven't watched, I haven't read the last two Naruto chapters, which come out today. I don't know what happens in them. All I know is that now I have the right to really do a proper review of the entire series. Why? Because it's done. I mean, there's going to be a movie that comes out in December, or at the later portion of this month, I don't know. But guess what? I'm not going to watch that movie. I'm not. Once I read these two chapters, the series, to me, is over. It's done. Why? Because I really don't care about what happens after this arc. I don't. I don't, I don't want to watch a movie. Why would I want to watch a movie have a movie night? I, I don't do that. I don't like investing an hour or two into something like a movie. Unless it's something I've wanted to see for a long time. Otherwise, I don't really care. I mean, I haven't even watched some of the episodes of Trigun, and I bought that DVD. It's been a month, and I haven't even used it. But I finally feel as if I can review the series, the anime, the manga, even the video games. Even the video games. I'm going to do it all right now. Okay, first off, one thing I always hated about the anime is that the animation is really inconsistent. And this is a problem I notice a lot with the director, Hayato Date. I know he has some acclaim because of Sayuki and because of what's that series called? Um, well, actually, it doesn't, doesn't have any acclaim for Great Teacher Onizuka, but that's one anime I want to see next. I watched a few episodes of the Sayuki series that he actually directed. I didn't see the Reload version. But, that one even had, had even worse animation. Because, there are a lot of parts in Naruto where the animation turns really ugly. Like, I remember in Shippuden, one of the first few episodes, they had the Sand Emperor guy just walking in place of his guys. And they all look like bobbleheads, you know, walking down the corridor. The angle that they used was horrible. And that could also be the fault of the storyboard guys, but they have a different storyboard guy. Like, every, maybe, few months. Like, it, it shifts. So I can't really blame storyboard guys, because then I'd have to, like, critique and discern upon, like, 25 different guys. So I'm going to blame the director because he has to look at this and he has to say, alright, this looks good. This is how it should look. Oh, this is terrible. But then again, if anime, it's kind of difficult, especially shonen anime. But I've never seen this problem with Yu Yu Hakusho. I've never... I actually thought the anime for Yu Yu Hakusho looks a lot better in the manga because the manga they would sometimes look really um, Chinese food store like for the first few chapters. I guess that would be funny, but it, it looked stupid to me. It would randomly turn really Asian looking instead of having those big eyes, and instead of looking, you know, badass like that, it ends up looking like something you would see in the menu of a Chinese food restaurant. It, and that's the same studio, Studio Period. Come on, you guys are, have worked on parts of Season 2 for The Legend of Korra. And people are really on that show's Disney. So, what's with the inconsistency here? The animation for Naruto, that's one of my problems with the series. But the music 
for the original Naruto was actually really good. Like, Orochimaru's theme is badass. Like, um, that really heavy metal theme with the old school, like, Asian, Japanese instruments. Yeah, that shit sounds like, kind of sounds like death metal, but it's not fast enough to be death metal. That that sounds really cool. That, that sadness and sorrow song that plays every time there's a sad ass flashback or scene. I mean, I know some memes that use that song. It's it really demonstrates the point. Naruto had a really good soundtrack. Shippuden. Shippuden tried to bring things to the next level in terms of. You know, upping up the scale and emotional intensity, but um, I didn't really like Shippuden as much in terms of the soundtrack. There, there were some that were really memorable, and I actually liked them. But it would have been nice if they just added those songs in the mix with some of the Naruto songs, because in you know, the original series part one, because that would have been really nice. So I like the music. It's rare that it will complement the soundtrack to an anime. But in terms of shonen anime, I actually really like the compositions. Because I can really appreciate them more. It's not 26 episodes per season or anything of that nature. It's actually 200 plus episodes, 100 plus episodes, a lot of different story arcs, so you get a lot of time to hear these songs, they become really repetitive over time, and familiar, Yu Yu Hakusho had my favorite soundtrack as a shounen anime, but Naruto's was actually really good, I actually enjoyed it, and that theme whenever they're in a hidden leaf village, that funny ass theme, I really liked it. But in terms of everything else, like the opening theme, closing themes, really, uh, I like the opening themes for Naruto. But up until it got to the filler section, the closing themes have been kind of crappy because there was no mu they didn't put any money into the budget for that. They just have these really action-packed opening themes with a lot of things going on and closing theme just have there was one closing theme in Naruto part one where it was just Naruto looking at the Hokage Mount Rushmore thing and then just perpetually zooming in you don't even see his face just zoom in one frame just one frame not even like a hair blowing thing just one frame it was it was bad. <laughs> now, in terms of the pacing of the show, I think that this is one thing I don't really like about Naruto's series and showing my anime in general. Why not just have this shit in seasons? And every now and then, you switch theme songs so it doesn't become repetitive. Why not just have it so that there's like two month breaks, three month breaks. I'm not saying 26 episodes and then we wait the next year. Maybe have like a, let's have like 26 episodes, wait two months, 26 more episodes. Is that difficult to maintain? I mean, if you do that, then maybe you wouldn't need all this filler. And... Don't get me wrong, I like filler if it does some justice, if it makes things a lot more interesting. But, this show is obviously on a budget. This show, no one ever talks about how badly budgeted this show is. This show is on a budget. Um, I know it's probably a good cash draw, but it's definitely on a low ass budget. It's not like toy animation where with Dragon Ball Z and One Piece where they really put in the money. 
This shit is... They're being modest here. Within story arcs, alright. Filler arcs, I don't mind as long as it's really fun and entertaining. But you're not going to get good character development out of this because then your characters are going to develop outside of the canon, which is a manga. So ultimately, it's going to have to reach a point where the characters start acting different, making different decisions than their manga counterparts. And let's be honest, when people are reading a manga because they want to get ahead, a lot of them think, I wonder how they're going to pull this off in the anime. They don't want them to make a 180. So watch you break from the mold and actually have a season-to-season -season basis. I know it's against the shonen religion. It wouldn't be a shonen then. It wouldn't be that kind of weekly, episodic, climactic shit. But still, it's you got to give us a bit of a break. We gotta actually like miss the series because I know people that review Naruto chapters like it's an episode of TNA Impact or Monday Night Raw. They just start getting, they start nitpicking, analyzing, hating the series, hating Kishimoto. Why would you hate the guy that's making the series you've been sucked into for about a decade? Why would you do that? That's stupid. Man, you gotta give the man some respect. Stop criticizing him because he doesn't know how to write female characters or you know, make a well-paced story. It's not always his fault. <laughs> it's not always his fault. The worst people, the most guilty people of this are Walking Dead fans. Walking Dead fans hate the fucking series that they watch. They hate it, man. I'm not going to lie, I watched the first two seasons of Walking Dead. The first season was like six episodes. It wasn't shit in terms of length. The second one, it was more like a proper season. It was less like something to get you hype and more like a main course. But people hated that season. I liked it. Even though it wasn't as action-packed. Even though it was a bit repetitive, I was like, you know, I didn't have a community to judge my thoughts and critique me and to tell me, okay, you got to think this way. Because if it was like that, then I would be a snob for something that I would have probably liked anyway without other people's thoughts. Or maybe I just have bad taste, who knows. But I thought it was actually okay. And then... And then, I stopped watching the series, people are still nitpicking every episode, they're still ranting, they're still making a bunch of weird spin-off shit, the sci-fi channel is still trying to ride its wave, the zombie wave. Like, guys, could you stop? Could you calm down? You guys are the biggest fans and haters I've ever met, and I'm a professional wrestling fan, and I'm a Final Fantasy fan. You know that's a big deal coming from me, knowing those two things. A lot of nitpickers. Pacing isn't very good. Um, I know there are a lot of scenes where the characters would say the same shit. They'll, be, they'll fight and they will converse in Naruto, but they would say the same bullshit. Like, you've said this a while ago. Why are you guys still arguing in circles? A lot of fighting scenes that are really good. I actually like the fights in Naruto. When they're not going into the same flashback over and over again. A lot of people hate on the flashbacks. I do as well. But considering the budget. That's a really effective way of telling the story. If you think about it. Because. Could you imagine the series without the flashbacks? When you watch a full fight episode. Where they skip out the flashbacks. It's still kind of interesting. But it 
the flashbacks do add a bit of layer to the storyline, although they are a bit excessive. Like if you just read the manga, you won't get the excessive part, but it's less forgiving in the manga because these chapters, it's like 17 to 19 pages. So when there's a flashback panel, that's really unforgiving on us, especially if it's a flashback we've seen three times in a chapter, then it is a problem. I don't have a problem with having two or three flashbacks assorted, or even four or five. And if it's Naruto versus Sasuke 6, assorted throughout a fight, my issue is that you're not giving people their money's worth. It's good when you're using that as an easy, effective way of telling a story, bringing certain ideas and themes into a fight, which might not have been there with, or might not have been as effective without that device used. I mean, that's a good literary device if it's used a little bit more moderately, because it's easy and it adds a layer to the theme that you're trying to convey. But, you guys gotta take a chill with that. Now, in terms of the actual plot and the story, because I, I haven't gotten to this yet. Now, this is going to be manga and anime now, because... Um... Yeah, I'm gonna go into the manga next time. But just for one thing. Now, in terms of plot and story, I actually really like the plot, um, the plot structure of this series, because it's linear. It's linear as hell. Like, um, there is a picture, it's, I might see it as propaganda, it was on Facebook and even on Tumblr, probably definitely on Tumblr. There's a picture of Naruto, it said, linear plot. There's a picture of Bleach, looping plot, you know, repetitive, you know, cyclical plot, actually. Yeah, it was cyclical, it just, it was a circle. One Piece, plot ever expansive with the universe. One Piece has some complex ass shit. You don't read One Piece for a year. You go back to it, and it's crazy all this stuff that's happening. Naruto, it's easy, it's simple, hell, it's not even like Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z was cyclical as all hell, Dragon Ball, not so much, I think, I mean, the story continues on, I mean, there's a three act, four act story going on for each arc, and because of that, it's a lot easier to stomach. It's, I can be a lot more forgiving with it. And this weird ass arc has happened for one whole day. Where it used to be a great ninja war, and then all of a sudden it was all of us against the team of Obito and Madara. And then it became some other shit. We've had multiple story arcs within the same day. We've had a super arc, really. I wouldn't divide this war arc into like multiple smaller arcs. It is a monolithical story arc. It's it's been crazy. This is sort of where it applies certain started to like fall apart because it's become way too taxing on us. In terms of one day, our characters went from being level 34 to level 99. That's the best way to describe it. Except for Sakura, because she was in the reserve party. But that shit walling out. Also. So while I like the plot for its linearity and simplicity, and the fact that it isn't just the same shit happening every arc, Part 2 kind of fucked it up. Because then it became this thing where 
there were Sasuke arcs and then there were Naruto arcs. What I mean is, they're both doing some shit. Every story arc is Naruto does some shit, Sasuke does some shit, um, either Kakashi or Jiraiya does some shit. That's every story arc. Something is happening with Naruto, something is happening with Sasuke, something is either happening with Jiraiya or Kakashi. From beginning to end. That's how it's been. Maybe Tsunade slash Kakashi slash Jiraiya. That's like one... Now it's complete. That's how it's been. It's repetitive. It's novel-like, but... The shifting focus every arc. If you're more of a Naruto fan, which means that you're probably a Western guy. Because that's usually the kind of people that like Naruto better. You've got that mindset. You're going to be pissed at that arc where it was Sasuke versus Itachi. Meanwhile, Naruto and Kakashi are wondering how they can touch Obito. And Jiraiya is getting... He's fighting pain, so... And he got clapped up and trapped up. If you were a Naruto fan for that arc, you were probably pissed. I know I was feeling it because there were a lot of things happening within that arc that were cool. But other than that, shit. Or if you're a Sasuke fan, you were in that arc where it was Naruto vs. Pain and things started to get super sane up in this. And you were thinking, yo, what was Sasuke thinking when he, when he said he was going to destroy the Hidden Leaf? What was he going to do? You're going to be pissed. You are going to be pissed as a mofo. That's one thing I don't like about the plot. Like the first, like part one was really good because you didn't have to deal with all that. I mean, I know there's that Itachi arc where Sasuke was a bit of a focus. But the interplay was interesting. And then when Sasuke was in that coma uh, and Naruto and Jiraiya had to go to that Tanzaku area to find Tsunade. That was also kind of interesting as well, but didn't really... The interplay was still interesting, so you could be a little bit more forgiving. It wasn't a something happened to Naruto, something happened to Sasuke, something happened to someone else kind of storytelling. It was a bit more... A bit more tolerable. That's the best way I can describe it. Now, the storyline won't get you because I suck at explaining stories. But characters? Yeah, I'll pretty much show you what I think about some of the characters. Jiraiya is my favorite character. Any character from that midpoint of... Part 1 is probably my favorite. Any of the earlier Part 2 characters my favorites. Everyone else, I'd say towards the end of Part 1. Actually, pretty much Part 1 did have a lot of my favorite characters, but they were all one-dimensional as hell. They were all one-dimensional. Their characters would develop from that one dimension they had. But after they did that, their characters were screwed because there was nothing interesting about their character anymore. Neji. Neji, this guy said, all right, it's all fate. We're born into our roles in society. I hate that. I should have been the one to rule my clan, the next in line. But no, I'm just a servant of Hinata. That's why he's such a dick to Hinata. And, yeah, he sees himself as being better. Naruto beats his ass, cause, and that changes his worldview because he thought Naruto was the biggest loser in the world. You get to see some of that character development in the Sasuke retrieval arc when you see the new changed version of him fighting um, 
He, he was fighting one of the, those sniper guys, some guy that had an arrow on him. But other than that, um, nothing much interesting happened after him. And later he dies last year. He dies last year, and that's a sad moment. But we really didn't see much that's interesting about him. The only other fight we've seen from him in part two is him fighting his own self. Big deal. And this guy's supposed to be a Joni now. Get out of here. But next was, uh... Gara really fell off as well. This mofo dies twice. How is that? See, when Gara starts out... I mean, he's, he put, he's put in so many near-death situations. When he starts off, he's like this very selfish, very sociopathic guy, kid that wasn't loved by anyone. He only sees meaning in life. He only sees last word in its meaning and in killing people. He has a very chaotic worldview. It's either kill or be killed. So he's kind of like Neji, but Neji is a bit more lawful. This guy is more like, alright, no one in this world loves me. You gotta care about yourself only. I was born with this Chukaku and that made everyone fear me and hate me. And he just goes on around, you know, using that sand coffin ability. Naruto kicks his ass. And eventually he becomes warm like a teddy bear. And you see him in action later on in part one, the Sasuke retrieval arc, you see some change. But that's it. When these characters change, or what about, uh, with Pain, there was that one guy, I forgot his name, it's the most emo looking guy, and he ends up like, he ends up with my body, he's like this guy that's like, put in this antenna, and he was supposed to be the one to essentially change the world, see the world, like be the successor to the stage of six paths. However, he fucks up. And instead he says that the only way we're ever going to change his world is if we create an illusion of a paradise. And trap everyone in it. And he becomes that kind of guy. The jaded idealist. That's the best way to describe him. Because he still believes in. Ideals like that. But he doesn't believe in a city of six paths anymore. He's kind of created his own monstrosity of that ideal. Then Naruto kicks. He defeats him. But he doesn't bother to kill him. They have a conversation. And then Naruto says some points that makes him realize, okay, this guy probably is the one who is going to change the world. I wasn't it. I was a false prophet this whole time. I failed. All right, I'm going to bring everyone back to life at the sacrifice of my own life. And that's what happens. Talk no jutsu. The characters... That get hit with the talk no jutsu. They lose the only variable in their character that makes them interesting. And in this series, there's only one variable that makes characters interesting. Because they are one-dimensional. They're all one-dimensional. I mean, Sasuke just got beaten in this, like, last chapter. And that hate, hate, hate shit is gone. That weird Avenger shit, shit, obsession with hatred, darkness, all this corn stuff, but what happens at, out of that? We go back to the old school chill Sasuke, the cool guy Sasuke. That's effectively taking off one variable of his, his interests, but his other variable is lukewarm and anemic. It really is, because guess what? We haven't had Sasuke like that in a very long time, nearly a decade. And I really don't know what to do with that. 
No wonder the series is ending. What? Last guy, last guy, Zabuza. Zabuza was the first victim of this because when Zabuza started off, he was rogue. That was his personality. He was just rogue as shit. Didn't appreciate anyone. He mass murdered his own clan or some shit. And he's not a proper ninja, but he's still dangerous as all hell. His friend takes a bullet for him. His girly ass friend dies. Naruto tells him, why were you such an ungrateful jerk when he sacrificed his life for you? Zabuza ends up like, needlessly sacrificing his own life to take out the gangsters, the mafia men he was working under as a mercenary. When he could have probably wiped them all out in a much more efficient way. But no, instead he goes in, eats all the blows, doesn't block anything, he just starts wiping them all out. You know, offensively, no defense. So he gets cut, he gets beaten like a bitch, and he kills all of them, but it's to the death of him. That was really cool, but it shows no dimension to his character. They all become lukewarm. That's the one thing I don't like about Naruto. Now I gotta talk about the video game. No, no, no. Now I gotta talk about... Cause I didn't explain the story, but I, I never explain stories because stories are really annoying to talk about. Now I gotta talk about one thing I liked about the manga. Just, this is gonna be really short. The drawing style is a little different from the anime. Look at the characters' eyes. Their eyes do not look like their anime counterparts. And I noticed this back in 2009 and thought it was really interesting. It's not that their eye colors are different, it's the way Kishimoto draws eyes that's different. And I thought that was kind of cool. But anyway, uh... One last thing I gotta talk about, I gotta talk about the video games. Cause... Naruto... Is the kind of thing where they will release a video game every year, and people will buy it. Now, originally, there were only two that were good. Ultimate Ninja for the Sony games and Clash of Ninja. There, were have, there haven't been any good Game Boy video games or portable video games in general. They've all been crappy. Except this one that was an RPG, but that's because... Well, Naruto would be perfect for an RPG. But still, it would close off at an awkward arc. These games are like the 2K games, the Call of Duty games. The only difference is that I think there's only one developer working on these games every year. One team. One whatever. So, it's even worse than all of those because... There's pretty much no variety in them. Just more characters, a couple of extra features added, and a story mode that's told differently. The reason I like the Ultimate Ninja series is because... After the first one... Someone here... You know, I guess I can make this for another day. I gotta find out who that is. Yeah.